I could have a go at that. Yeah. Forgot to record it, sorry. But yeah, that's gonna be the, uh, the round part of the nose. started on the ears now. No, don't like that. One horse's ear. <laughs> One pair of ears. Here's where we're at now. Got one sort of horsey head. Next up is to do the sides in the top. What I'm now trying to do is shape the cheeks, which is not as easy as you might expect. Cheek one done, now I've just got to uh, cut it off and make another one exactly the same. Well so far, this thing is going remarkably well. Uh, I think it must be the fact I'm wearing my lucky unicorn. But um, yeah, I mean, all things considered, I have managed not to completely fuck it up yet. Which frankly is remarkable, so... God, it's warm though. Well, here is where I got up to. Uh, Started beginning to resemble the shape of a, a horsey head. However, as you might be able to see in here, the heavens have now opened. So, um, unfortunately, I think my lucky unicorn has, uh, has rather worn off. And I was just doing the, um, the top bits of the head shape the uh, sort of forehead of the horse, but uh, unfortunately welding angle grinders and general electrics do not like rain, so I'm going to have to call it there until uh, hopefully it stops. So uh, thankfully it appears to have stopped raining relatively quickly. Um, it wasn't that heavy a shower, but looking at the anvil, you see the rust that's appeared on that, just in that short little shower. It's probably only been about half an hour and it's already started to rust, but it goes to show just... Uh, why, when you're making knives and things, you shouldn't leave them wet, you should dry them off straight away and oil them. Right, so, this part here, 
is going to be part of the forehead. I need to do another one like this, cut off about here. Then that's going to go sort of from the nose up to the ears, facing outwards, the ears coming up. You'll see what I mean. There we go. So we've cut out the two forehead pieces, which are going to go like so, along the bridge of the nose and up. Uh, I've left them long deliberately, but I'm going to cut them off around here, um, I think, thereabouts. Um, otherwise it might look a little bit weird. But, uh, yep, next step is to weld those on. There we are. He's now got his nose welded on. Pretty poorly mine, but I make uh, no excuses. I am a terrible welder. But, yeah, um, I think the next thing, I need to do something more with his nose. Just put another line through, I think, just to make it more rounded. Um, and then I suppose it's moving on to the body. Hmm, that would be interesting. I haven't even looked at how to start that yet, so there will probably be a bit of a pause while I uh, come up with a plan. Tell you what though, it does go to show that bit of metal, which is on the ground, taller than I am, all of that has gone into making that. That is exactly one of these bars. Crazy when you actually look at it like that. But, uh, no more. There we go. We've now got the next bit of metal in the forge, which is going to be the neck. Uh, this is the part I'm slightly more nervous about. I kind of know what a horse's head looks like, but the proportions of the body, uh, well, they're all over the place, depending on the breed and the shape and the movement. So, I don't know, I think I'm going to wing this. So it turns out, neck, not that complicated. Slight bend. And uh, that looks roughly right for the shape I'm going to be going for. I want a horse in mid-jump. So uh, they tend to sort of crane their necks from what I can see. So, yep, that'll do. There you go. I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So I've now got another bit of steel in, and I'm going to be doing uh, two undersides of the neck connecting to the just behind the cheeks. That's going to be the plan. There we go. There's the two... Uh lower halves of the neck and the, uh, I don't know, haunches I suppose, is it? That's, uh, I'll go there, roughly. Oh, sorry, I can't do that with one hand. But you get the idea. Uh, I need to trim it off though, cut them a bit shorter, because there's a bit too much going on there. Not going to lie, I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously a long ways to go, but I actually think that does somewhat Look like a horse, I said. So, you know, all things considered, I will take that and run. The body is obviously going to be next, and that is going to be a nightmare. So, oh, the temptation is just to carry on and battle through, but I think I might have to leave it there for today, because, uh, again, as and when you start to get tired, you're going to make dumb mistakes. So, there we go. See... I now have the rare and first world problem that the insulation in my forge is so good that it's still hot even though it's like 10 o'clock at night and there's a thunderstorm outside. So if I leave it outside it'll rust and it'll ruin for tomorrow but if I bring it inside the coals will set off the carbon monoxide alarm. So it is the next morning, I'm cleaning out the forge, and you can see here, this is slack. This is the uh, byproduct of coal when it's burned, and uh, it's useless, it just clogs up air vents. But that's a big old, big old slab of it, and uh, yeah, there's several. So I'll get this cleaned up and then we'll start again. So the forge is lit. Uh, we are currently working on the front legs. So that's going to be the um, sort of exterior side, and then I've got to have two more. One will come up to the sort of sternum area and follow it round, and then the other side will come posterior and will be the back, so it'll have to be considerably longer with an extra bend in. Uh, so that'll be this one here. That's what we're doing at the minute. As you can see here, these are fantastically organised three loose pieces of metal are going to be one leg. Uh, I'm now going to work on just making the foot. So, I is totes about to be a farrier in it. I don't know how farriers talk. Apparently like chavs. Totes just made a horseshoe. I is now a farrier.
There we are. First leg welded on and welded into shape. Actually came out all right, that. Um, a friend of mine I showed this to asked me what template I'm following, and to be honest, I'm just eyeballing it. Um, I don't have any particular guide other than just pictures of horses and my very crude rough sketches just to follow a rough idea. So, I've obviously got to do the other leg, but first I kind of want to get an idea for how the back's going to go. Sort of up to around here somewhere, I think. I'm not entirely sure. This one will be interesting. I think this one could take a bit of playing to get the right position. There we go. Both legs are on. That second one actually took a remarkably long time uh, trying to get them all sticking together. You can see there's a lot of bodged welds in there, which I am obviously extremely proud of, like usual. But, on the upside, that does actually look, or resemble at least, a rearing horse, or a jumping horse. Um, I was going to try and continue a little bit, and uh, I did start on the bit of metal to, to do the back. I uh, don't know if I'm going to be able to... Um, not really. But unfortunately, I have run out of coal, so uh, I'm going to have to go and pick up some more of that. And also, actually, I'm going to have to pick up some more metal, because uh, that was two and a bit of these uh, those long rods, and all I'm left with is what I'm holding in my hand and that little bit there. I do have some rebar, but I think it would look a bit weird if it's switched or transitioned halfway through to a sort of rigid, or ridged, sorry, uh, texture. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to nip to the shop and I'm going to get some more uh, coal and metal. But there we go. Metal! And coal! Yeah! Be rude not to, I suppose. So, whilst I might be done with the forge, uh, for today. I might not be done with the forge for today. Um, I've had a plan for a while that I want to put um, some casters on the bottom, just on two corners, probably on that side. Because um, at the moment I'm having to carry this thing indoors through a utility room, down a hallway and into the garage, which, trust me when I say, this thing is not easy. It weighs a bloody ton. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I might quickly have a little go. I think I'll, I'll just lop off, lop off uh, each of the corners, fold it back under itself. Do you know what? I'm just going to do it because explaining it doesn't make any sense when I say it out loud. So um, I'm going to put some wheels on, and then maybe I might try and put like some handles coming off these two or something. I don't know. I'll figure that out if the wheels work. This is probably partially because I'm at the wrong angle, but this metal is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to drill through. <sighs> you can't really see, but this is how much I'm pushing just to get through it. <sighs> Jesus. Finally, we have the first one in place. Not budging. Now, we just got to work on this side. God, that was a mission. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to cut across, or score across here, about halfway through. And I'm going to completely cut through this side, and then I'm going to fold it sort of up and underneath itself. So I'll be cutting this bit of metal out entirely. And then I'll put some reinforcement welds on the inside. Keep it strong. Hopefully. There we go. Both feet now attached. Uh, next is to grind. I've marked out where I need to go. 
And uh, yeah, I'm just going to get on and do it. Uh, I'll show you afterwards. Sorry if my voice sounds weird, I'm wearing my nose clip. Success. It works. Some more horrendously bad welding, but that is holding the weight. Uh, and it does make it a lot easier to move it around. So that's a success. I'm going to leave it there for today. So the first order of the day is to use this piece of stainless steel. Uh, I'm going to heat it up to critical and then I'm going to touch mark it. What I want to do is I want to put a diamond with my touch mark right in the middle of the horse's forehead as my signature. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do first. There we go. Just like that. That should polish up nicely, and I've made sure it's deep enough that it'll uh, survive any grinding. The idea with the stainless steel is obviously, while well, the rest of the horse is um, either going to rust or I'm probably going to paint it with uh, metallic black paint, uh, this will be the only part that stays shiny. A little bit vain maybe, but you know what? I'm kind of proud of what's happened so far. I don't see anything wrong with it. There we go. One touch mark on stainless steel. Uh, I've now just got to shape it into a diamond that way up and uh, we'll figure out some way of fitting that to the horse's forehead. Not entirely sure how I'm going to do that yet. So I'm trying to roughly sketch out how I want the body to look, but um, yeah, I can't quite get the proportions right. I think I need to uh, elongate slightly. Uh, ignore that, that's old, but that's kind of the leg I'm working for there. If that makes sense. I don't know, it looks a bit stumpy. I think I need to make it longer. So, whilst I'm still sort of going over how I want to uh, do the body, getting a rough shape, I'm just doing a couple of hoops for sort of reinforcement for the neck. One's done, and I've got another one partially done at the moment. Uh, so I'm kind of stalling, to be honest, but I needed to do it. Um, otherwise it was going to be all floppy and weird. There we are, both loops done. Just got to weld them in place now, but to be honest, they're um, they're so well fitting that actually I'm not entirely sure I'll need it. But uh, I will. Not going to take any chances. Looks all right though, I think. So I'll do that sort of a couple more rings lower down the body once I've got it done. Right. Having now done a little bit more um, sort of research, I've got a shape I'm relatively happy with for the back. So I had the body way too short, as you can see. This is where I had the legs before, but the legs need to be right back here coming down probably around there not entirely sure but yeah so uh, I've got to redo the belly piece this one because uh, I had it way too short it ended about there and I needed it to come all the way back to about here so uh, doing that at the moment all right so we're getting there now I've got the rough shape worked out um, next is uh, I'm gonna be doing some more of these support rings so I need to do one between the sternum and that sort of ridge in the back uh, and then I need to sort of just along here and then I need to start figuring out the size of these ones so that then I can secure the um, the horse's sternum and the horse's spine together not together you know what I mean onto the main part but I think that looks pretty good and then obviously I've got to figure out the legs but I think that'll be uh, tomorrow's task at this rate there we are just got done shaping this one so that will be going just in the middle, there. But now I've just got to do that last little bend and close it off and then we'll weld that in place. This is what happens when a hot coal lands on the back of your glove. I am very glad I was wearing them. Not a mark on me. Happy days. Alright, so... I just got done welding on the body and the uh, support. This is where we're up to now. Not looking too bad, I don't think. Um, I'm going to do now the rings for the body going down all the way to its um, derriere. Uh, and then, depending on how I feel, I might start on the back legs, but I think that's going to be a bit of an arse today. What I might do is put the same sort of rings going around the forelegs but uh, not sure yet. Damn horsey, you fine. So we've now got this uh, this middle one um, that has been welded, obviously onto the frame and then also onto the uh, 
uh, the joints, I guess, of the uh, front legs. Um, I need to do, I think, two more year and year, and then um, I'm probably going to need to start working on the back leg before I can figure out how to do the actual rump. But um, yeah, it's looking alright so far. Resembling horsey. What I will do as well is I'm going to put a mane on it. Um, and I haven't quite decided yet if I'm going to use the scrap bits I haven't used on the rest of the project, or whether I was thinking of the idea of uh, maybe using bits of chain. But the only trouble with that is they'll probably hang straight down, whereas I want them to come over to one side. Um, so yeah, not not quite sure about that yet. I'll figure that out when we get to it. That's a long way off yet. Disaster. Whilst uh, working on the next loop and heating it up as he can, uh, I had this bit of metal balanced perfectly. However, on turning my back, it turns out it wasn't so perfectly balanced, and the fire brick at the back has fallen off and broken, as has the lid. So that's a little bit annoying. We're now stuck as we are, but the good thing is there's still enough heat in there to do it. And the lid will still work, it just won't be as effective as normal. But that's a bit of a shitter. Right, I reckon that now is probably oh, about the right size. We should do a quick test fit. Yep, absolutely perfect. Sweet, so now we just need to chop that off. So I give the touch mark another heat and another bloody good thwack. Um, just because obviously where I'm sanding it I don't want the image to disappear. Uh, and I've just left it next to the fire there just to anneal now. So that'll make it nice and soft so that when I get to grinding it... Um, it should hopefully save me going through a belt. But uh, yep, that'll be the last little thing I do today. Just sanding that into shape. Ah, there we go. Finally, I have got my touch mark diamond the way I want it. Which has come out pretty well, actually. There you go. Uh, if I can get it to focus. There you go. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. That looks alright to me. So that, when it's well, when the rest of it's done, we'll go in the uh, centre of the horse's head. Uh, don't know what that is on my nose. I'm a mucky pup. I need to go shower. I'm done for the day. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Mm. So... Partially because I was out last night at a friend's leaving drinks and I'm very hungover. Partially because it's been uh, raining outside and the forge is soaking. And partially because I've got an eye test uh, in the next few hours. Uh, I'm not going to have the chance to light up my forge today, so I'm not going to be doing any, um, any work on the actual horse frame. What I might do instead is I might work on the um, touch mark I made. So... I'm toying with the idea. I quite like the sort of rough finish it's got. I don't know if it'll focus. Focus? No, it doesn't matter. I quite like the rough finish it's got, but I'm toying with the idea of maybe smoothing it up and making it look a little bit nicer. But I need to probably thin it down a bit, uh, and then I might uh, see about trying to fit it uh, on the horse's forehead. Which I was sort of planning to leave till the end, but I haven't really got anything else to do today. To the horse, I mean. So, um... Yeah, might do that. Don't know. I'll see how I feel later. Ugh. Ow. So I've measured out the um, piece of stainless steel and it's 7mm thick. So what I did was I um, used the drill press and I drilled a hole 5mm deep down into it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole all the way through the horse's head. I'm going to tap both holes and I'm going to screw this on. And I'm going to sort of try and dig out the metal um, from the horse's head so that it sits almost flush, probably slightly pronounced, but almost flush. Um, so next I've got to drill the hole through the horse's head. Sounds a bit morbid. There we go. Just like that. 
Right, the hole I've drilled in the touch mark is 3mm and I've bought myself some 4mm screws and the idea is I thread it with a 4mm tap uh, into the hole uh, and then obviously I'll do the same on the horse's head and this should screw straight through the horse's head and into that nice and flush um, and the way to tell if the thread depth is the same is simply to put the two together and see if they lock in place which I don't think I'm going to be able to focus but these these do so that's the right one so next thing to do is to tap that hole and then tap the other giggity giggity I don't know why but I've always liked doing tapping something quite satisfying about it here we are so using my favorite tool, my die grinder. I have uh, ground out the rough shape, which now, rather nicely, oops, I can do this one handed, fits the uh, touch mark. So, like I say, it's still a little bit proud, which I like. Um, the only problem is, whilst, sorry, whilst trying to tap the touch mark, I went and bloody snapped off the tap, didn't I? I've always liked doing tapping. So now I'm a little bit stuck. I don't know how to get that out. I tried drilling it out and as you can see it slipped off to one side so I might have to drill another hole which would kind of render that pointless. So that's a real pain in the arse. I'm going to have to somehow figure out how to get this out of there. Mm. So I have gone from feeling like a monumental dildo to Da Vinci Van Einstein or something. I've figured out a masterful way to attach my touch mark to the horse's head. Um, what I did was I used my little blow torch over there to heat up uh, sort of this area to as hot as I could. Not quite critical, but not quite far off, but it causes the metal to expand. I've then stuffed in the touch mark and given it a few thwacks with um, a rubber mallet, uh, and then I've quickly dunked the, the head underneath the tap with cold water, which caused the um, the surrounding metal to very, very quickly um, contract again, uh, and that appears to have wedged this thing in an absolute tree. You know, I can literally drag the whole head with that. So, uh, whilst not my original plan, uh, it has solved the problem and rendered drilling the hole pointless and useless, which is absolutely fine because I could not get. The, uh, the tap out of the piece of stainless steel um, that's still in there and will probably remain so for now but considering that wasn't the original plan it's probably created a better fit than I could have I could have hoped for so happy with that not a bad little fluke really so it is a good many days later I haven't had the time or the chance to do any recently so uh, this is the first bit I've done in a while so we've got the forge lit um, and today it's going to be working on the back legs, which uh, I've been dreading for quite some time, to be honest. Oh, look, I'll touch one. But yeah, this is what I've uh, roughly sketched out, so that's what I'm going to be trying to follow, but I'm, I'm not looking forward to this. I think this is going to be an absolute pain, but you never know. I thought the same about other parts, so... So, these are my gloves I use at the moment, and just through the heat, the leather has actually now clawed so that that is as far as I can stretch it uh, which makes picking things up quite awkward. I'm basically a claw hand. That's all the movement I've got. And then obviously the other day uh, I ruined that one. So, out with the old and I've gone and bought myself some new ones. Look how shiny they are! I have literally had them on five minutes and they've already saved me from getting burned. So. Good job. Right, I've done the uh, the rough shape of the back legs. I'm standing on my anvil, so you can actually get a good vantage. But that's going to be the rough shape. So the horse is going to be jumping that sort of angle, I think. Um, I need to obviously trim off the back and the arse slightly because it's kind of protruding a little bit. But um, oh, sorry, shake your hand up here. Um, but I've now got to do like the third strut of the leg, like I did with the front one. So I've got a sort of triangular pattern. Uh, and this part I'm not entirely sure how I'm quite going to do. Um, not sure, just going to wing it, like usual. Right, 
so there's the three parts of the leg done. Um, this middle one's obviously going to be sort of raised towards the camera in that sort of angle. And then I've had to put this notch uh, just above the horse's hoof, because if you look, they all have this kind of secondary step. So what I'm going to do, same with the front legs, um, I'm just going to lop off for the moment, and I'm going to worry about the hooves later. Um, so next step will be to make another one and weld it all together, and then somehow figure out how I'm going to attach it to the frame. I really wish I had a better plan for this. There we go. Some assembly required. So that's both the rear legs. Um, what I'm going to do, obviously, weld them together, um, and then I need to put some, um, similar to the, the hoops around the body, I'm going to do just a couple, a mid sort of shin and a mid femur, um, just to add a little bit of extra support. There we go, one hind leg, nice and 3D. There we go, both legs are now welded together, and I'm actually pretty happy with how those proportions are looking. That to me does actually genuinely look like a jumping horse, so put that where it belongs, somewhere around there. This is not going to balance. Eh, come on, we can do this one-handed. Yes! Um, right, so now I've got to sort of weld the legs apart, so they're not touching, um, and then work out how I, like I say, how I'm going to connect them to the frame, but hang on a minute, let me come up here. Eh. Go and go climbing again. Whoops. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Cool. Horsey has some back legs. Just trying to figure out whether or not the proportions look right. Um, sometimes I find when I look at something I've made or drawn or whatever for too long, um, it looks right at the time, and then I'll go away, and I'll come back the next day, and... Uh, I'll look at it again and I'll go, that looks completely off. But, I mean, I don't know, that, that looks right. I'm going to torture myself with this for hours now. But that, that to me looks like a horse jumping, doesn't it? Don't know. Have to wait and see. Alright, I've got my uh, little leg supports in place. I've now just got to weld them on. There we go. Turn the tensile. So, here is where we are now up to. Horsey is actually looking pretty good now. Um, I uh, obviously added some more supports, oops, sorry, just in the uh, bottom of the legs here. But um, I also went back and uh, readjusted um, the sort of proportions around its sort of hips, um, which was incredibly awkward because it literally involved lifting the entire horse frame into the fire and then trying to angle it so that I could whack it on the anvil. As you can see, that's now in a very strange shape, but it's um, it's given a proportion and a, a ratio, which I'm much more happy with. So I think I need to do probably one more ring through the belly, and then I need to do something with the arse and the hips. I'm not quite sure what yet. Um, be it just another one or maybe going a different angle, I'm not sure. Um, and then, having done that, I think that'll be it for the day. It's amazing, just doing the back legs and a couple of extra rings, that has literally taken me all day. 
This is a very time consuming project, much more so than I thought it would be. There we go, legs and arse done, and that extra ring in the middle. Uh, the very last thing I want to do is do some uh, little support loops, like I did in the back legs, but in the front. Uh, and then that will be the uh, the skeleton done, and then I'll be on to doing the cladding. <sighs> there we go. Five days of work has culminated in completing the exoskeleton for the jumping horse. It's looking alright. I'm not too... Uh, it's not 100% perfect, but you know what? It's my first sculpture. It's the first time I've tried anything like this with metal. So, um, yeah, you know what? I'll take it. I don't think that's too bad. I'm pretty happy with it. So we've, uh, obviously... I took the um, the touch mark out, um, but I'm going to do that again, probably... Actually, I might do it now. Yeah, sorry, I'll do it now. Right. Time has come to start working on the cladding. It's a new day. What I'm going to do is I've got my uh, little notebook full of paper, and I'm going to be cutting out the shapes um, I want sort of uh, to weld onto the uh, the skeleton. And then uh, once I've got a sort of rough design I like the look of, I've got this big piece of, um, well, I've got two of these actually, or three of them, big piece of uh, just sheet steel, which is uh, 0.75mm thick, uh, and then I'll be welding onto there. So, paper for the template, metal for the, uh, the finished thing. There we go, here's the, uh, the rough shapes for the head cut. Just like that. Uh, next step, I might just try doing that in metal first and just seeing how that looks. Not quite sure. This is going to take quite a while to clad the whole bloody horse though, I tell you. Okay, so I've now cut out uh, the cladding for one, just one half of the face. Um, I'm just going to go outside and give it a quick weld, and I just want to kind of see how it looks. But um, yeah, I kind of like it. It kind of gives, kind of gives the horse a bit more expression, I think. Kind of got its little eye there. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that looks. Right, there it is with the uh, first half welded on. Um, something I was worried might happen uh, has where you can see like along here, where the sheet steel is so thin, the welds just burn straight through it if it's not literally sort of like glanced over. Um, so you kind of have to do these little tiny spot welds. Um, the good news is that it's pretty strong and it holds. And actually, considering uh, it was something I was worried about, I think it looks really freaking cool. That sort of battered, scarred look. So uh, I think I'm going to try and carry on like it is. Um, and we'll just see how it comes out. But yeah, I quite like that. Like there as well, you know, the sort of rough, rough, tough, sort of battered look. Yeah, I like it. So... This is what I'm getting out of the effort I'm putting in. Um, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Um, these welds, they're not really welds. They're just like multiple tacks because you try and weld for any period of time and you just blow holes in it straight away. But like I said, I do quite like the finish. quite like how it looks. But uh, God, this is taking ages. Um, I genuinely thought it would be a case of, oh, you know, cut out a few pieces and just stick them on. But, um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's a lot more work than that. I mean, that doesn't look like I've achieved very much, but that's been about, well, probably the best part of an hour and a half. It's crazy. But, it's coming out alright. Looks good from the front anyway. Ignore these temper marks, these are all going to be uh, painted over anyway. The only thing that's not going to be painted is the touch mark. But, um, yeah, it's just all of it all a bit new to me. Another day, another learning curve. This is where we're up to. I think I'm finally starting to get the hang of these welds. Um, don't get me wrong, I mean I know they look terrible, but um, you see like here, 
Um, oh, previously I was just blowing holes straight through and I'm now getting a little bit better at keeping them intact without making quite so many sort of holes. So, like I say, it's not exactly pretty, but they hold and they are strong. You know, none of these are going anywhere. Um, okay, now, it's starting to look pretty good now. Uh, I've got to finish this leg. Um, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside because otherwise I'm going to have real issues if I do both sides to get in there um, to try and prevent the, the rust getting through. So, um, yeah, I'll finish this leg, just make sure I've not missed anything on this side, and then um, on to the next. First side now complete, finally. I think it looks all right. It looks quite weird from the other side when you see it sort of skeletal, but um, yeah, I think that's come out all right personally. I like how it's looking. So um, I'm trying to decide if I want to pause for today or whether I'm going to carry on. But um, yeah, next step will be to paint the inside of all of this because otherwise I'll have trouble getting my hand through. I've left a couple of big gaps deliberately so that I can do the other side. But uh, yeah. There we go. Horsey starting to look like a horsey. I have no idea what is in metal paint, but whatever it is, it's incredibly sticky. So I've tried washing my hands about seven times and even had a shower and I still can't get that off. But, uh, oh well. Here we go anyway, here's Horsey. Looking alright. Needs another couple of coats, I think, or at least one more anyway. But, uh, yeah, looks alright. And then obviously, next step, as he's looking a little bit yin and yang at the moment is to uh, do the other side and then uh, give that a paint as well I like how the touch mark looks I think that looks really cool -da. there we go starting on the second side the welding is definitely getting better um, again it's not perfect but there are a lot less holes on this side actually managing to get some relatively solid welds. So uh, yeah, I think I've kind of getting the hang of it a bit. It is so nearly finished. I have literally got this last sort of hind quarter to do on this side. Otherwise it's all done. But uh, unfortunately, I have run out of welding electrodes, so I'm going to have to go get some more of those as well. <sighs> Et voila. Cladding now finished. I say finished, the only last thing I've got to do is put the rear hooves on, but I'll wait until uh, everything else is done until then. Um, obviously I've got to paint this side, and then I was having an experiment with a bit of chain, so I've just welded a test piece on, just to see how it sort of looks and how it hangs, and I think that'll look pretty good as a main. So I'll have that coming all down, a little bit over the forehead, and then I'll make this the tail out of the same stuff. I need to move this further up, though, so it's sort of coming out here. But um, otherwise, yeah, that is, uh, that's the hard bit done. Thank God. I must admit, I'm getting sick of the sight of this bloody horse. So that's all the welds ground out, pretty much. Roughly, but it'll do. It's enough for the paint can fill in the gaps. Um, I'm not going to paint it now. I'm knackered. Uh, that took a long time. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. I'll leave Horsey there for the moment. Looking good, though. Day eight or nine. Nine, I think, uh, of working on this horse. 
Uh, I'm hoping today's going to be the last day. Um, all I've got to do now is paint the horse uh, on the inside of the bit I did yesterday, uh, and obviously on the other side, and then I need to give the whole thing a second coat. Um, and then the last thing to do after that is to weld on the tail and the, uh, the mane, um, and then I just need to obviously touch up again with the paint, uh, the bits in between. And then I think that's it. I think we are finished. Um, it'll just be a bit of um, a bit of tidying up and a bit of just uh, sorting out any messy bits. But um, so far, I've been I'm, I'm lying a little bit. I've already been up and I've already given the uh, the inside its uh, coating, and I've given this side its second coating. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I've left the um, the neck unpainted because that's where I'm going to be welding the other bits of chain on. But uh, that's where we're up to now. I don't know if you could see that. I was having to do that reverse shot so I can actually see the screen. So um, I'm leaving that to dry. Uh, and then I'll flip it over and paint everything else I can see, basically. All the missing bits. That's the plan. Lesson learned regarding painting horsey. Wear rubber gloves. I've still got that paint on my hands from, what was it, yesterday or the day before? Um... Uh, it's not coming off. It's better than it was, but it's uh, tough to shift. So uh, while I'm waiting for horsey to dry in the sun, I thought I'd just share with you a couple of thoughts about this project. Um, the short term, I'm glad I didn't try painting it yesterday because I was very tired and I definitely would have done a slapdash rush job. Um, I spent quite a lot of time this morning getting in all the little nooks and crannies I could find. And obviously I'll have to do the same on the other side when I get to it. But yeah, I would not have paid that level of detail. Um, other things about this project, like I say, it's been about, I think, nine days' work. Um, give or take, you know, like half days. And But nine nine days I've physically got up and gone, I'm going to work on the horse today. Sounds a bit weird, but you know what I mean. Um, I'm planning on probably trying to sell this. Um, I don't know how much for. Uh, looking on eBay, it, they go for prices anywhere from sort of a hundred quid up to like a thousand um, so I might try my luck and put it in the middle I've really got no idea um, but let's say I in theory I get half a grand for this it probably wasn't worth the effort and the um, the cost of the materials I spent probably about 150 quid uh, on the metal the, the poles the um, the sheet metal the steel uh, the coal for the forge um, welding electrodes, all these little things which you don't necessarily think of, I've actually spent quite a lot of money on. Um, so like I say, probably about 150 quid worth of material uh, on top of my time. So you know, I'm, I'm charging 500 quid for nine days effort. Well actually I'm charging 350 for net profit. So I don't know, you could maybe, maybe if I got better at it, I could maybe make a bit more of a profit of margin. Um, other things about this project, I wouldn't do sheet steel again, or at least not this thickness. Um, the advantage of it being so thin is that I can easily manipulate it, so you know, if I want it to fit closely to um, one of the bars, all I have to do is I can just bend it with a pair of pliers and hand, uh, with a, you know, a gloved hand so I don't cut myself. It's very easy to shape it. The downside of it being so thin, as I've said over and over, is the welding. Um, it has been an absolute pain to try and weld, um, so I don't think I'd use sheet cladding again. What I might do is use some more of the bar and do like a sort of hashed, textured, you know, crisscrossy thing to sort of give it more of a defined shape, because um, that would just be much easier to weld. Um, the downside of that again is I would probably need um, either need to forge certain bits if I wanted bends, um, or I'd just use very short bits um, and just have to use a lot of a lot of angle grinding cutting. What I will say is I've enjoyed working on it. Um, I enjoyed doing the forging side of things, you know, actually getting the bits of metal in the forge and heating up and whacking it with a hammer. That was fun. I haven't enjoyed the sheet, the, the, the sheet cladding at all. Um, and the painting I didn't enjoy, but I'm finding I prefer it a lot more when I'm just spending a whole day on it. I don't have to worry about things like cleaning brushes and, you know, where I'm going to store it and things like that and having to wait for it to dry so that then I could do the next bit of welding and, you know, all this. It's nice just to be able to go, no, I'm painting today. Um, so there's that. But uh, yeah, overall, I've enjoyed the project. I don't know if I'm going to do another one. I think this might be a one-off. Um, or if I do do another project, like I say, I'm going to do it differently. Um, but 
it is what it is. I think it's come out all right. I don't think it looks too bad. It's just whether or not I can get rid of it now. <laughs> but yeah, I must admit, I'm, um, I was getting pretty sick of the sight of the thing, but I'm quite looking forward to seeing it finish now. Uh, just got to finish this last coat of paint and put his mail and, ta mail, mail and tame on? Tail and mane on. Uh, and we'll see how it looks after that. But I expect this will probably be another day's work. One last thing, or maybe two. First of all, what a day to finish this project on. I'm just sat out in the garden editing this video, waiting for the horse to dry. Um, so that's good. But um, secondly, the, I will say it has massively helped with my um, forging technique. Um, up until now, I've tried quite relatively complex jobs for a beginner. You know, like me trying to make a Damascus billet, or um, even just general sort of trying to, um, you know, forge and heat treat um, knives and things like that. Um, I haven't actually had much practice on just hitting a hot bit of metal and getting it into a shape. So uh, this has been perfect for that because there has been pretty much nothing but hitting a hot bit of metal and bending it into shape. So in that regard, um, yeah, I think the experience gained from this is probably invaluable. Um, it's not been a wasted effort, put it that way. I've just thought of one last thing this horse needs attached to it. <laughs> Anyone starting to see where I'm going with this yet? There we go. One fully painted horse feet. All done. That's two layers on both sides. One thing I do need to do is I need to redo that touch mark because it got a bit dirty. But that's fine. So, last step, wait for that to dry. And then this. And that, and that's your lot. It's fucking done. Thank Christ for that. Ah, God, that feels good to finish it. And that feels even better. <laughs>